Welcome to Cast Tutorials and in this video I'll be redoing practice problem 9.3. So I do have a previous video that covers this question or these two questions and I just link it on the top right. But I have been requested to do the same process manually. So let's get to it. Now let's say you you're not allowed to use the calculator for specific sections, then if you just go through the textbook, you'd see the rules that will help you to do this manually. But obviously at some point we have to use the calculator because it basically simplifies the stuff. So instead of doing the whole question using the calculator, I'll try to break down some parts where I can. So, okay, this is what we have and I'll just leave this diagram as a reference. So I like making this diagram and I'm sure you might have seen it somewhere. And this is just to make the convergence quite simple, right? So at this point we have, let's say we have 30 degrees at that point, let's say we have 30, uh, 45, there we have 60 degrees and this is obviously 90. So if you count starting from the bottom, you'd have these coordinates and these would correspond to cosine. So the X corresponds to cosine and the Y corresponds to sine. So you just take out this value and that would be, for example, if you want to find cosine of zero. So this line is zero. So you just take this X value. And these other values correspond with the angle, which is adjacent to the line. So when you go to cosine of 30, you should expect something like this. So we're counting down on the X and we are counting up on the Y. And this is until we, we reach a point where we have the Y as one up here because cosine of 90 is not cosine, but sine of 90 is expected to be one, right? So, We'll use this as our reference point or just to simplify some of our calculations. Let's get right into the question. So this asterisk on the outside, that indicates the conjugate. So we want to find the conjugate of everything that is a conjugate. And let's start with these two brackets, which you can just multiply just like in normal algebra. So if you say five multiplied by minus one, you should get minus five. And if you multiply the same five with J4, then you expect to get J20. Then J2 multiplied by that will be this. Then you have J multiplied by J2 multiplied by J4. Now the J's, when you multiply these two, they amount to, so J is an imaginary number. It's of this form. Now, if you multiply two of these, expect to get minus one, right? So that is one of the, rules that you can find in the textbook or if you just know this so if you multiply j2 and j4 then you expect to have that minus one then you expect to have the product of the constants which are next to each of the j's so you have two and four and that is what you expect to get so that'll be your result and we are done with this section now to move on to this section this is where the diagram comes into play so this is the magnitude of our complex number, and this is the phase. So you take the magnitude and you multiply the X component of this. We're now transforming this into rectangular form, which is of the form A plus JB, or whichever way that you are used to. So these are just variables. They can be just about anything. So this is the real part of the complex number. This is the uh, imaginary part. So now, the real part will be given by the cosine of the phase and the imaginary part will be given by the sine of the phase. And we can now use this diagram and everything. Don't forget that every, we have to find the conjugate of everything. So now this is our full problem and this is easy to simplify before we get to this section. So we can just add, we have a real part minus five and we have a real part minus eight over there. And if you add those two, minus five minus eight, you should get minus 13. Then you have that um, J20 minus J2, which should give you J18. So this is how far we've come. And now in here, you're going to say minus 5. Then you're going to transform the cosine of 60 using this diagram that I drew. If you go to the X value, which corresponds with the cosine, that would be half. 
And if you go to the same place, but now taking the Y, this is what you expect to get. And finally, don't forget that we have to find the conjugate of everything. So now we can just multiply through in there. And if you do so, this is what you get, minus five over two, minus J, five square root of three over two. And we want to find the conjugate of everything. Now, this is where you might want to use the calculator just to be safe, just to add the stuff up, which is inside the brackets. And if you add, or you can just go ahead and see how you can transform this. So minus 13 would be, if you want to convert it to have uh, this same denominator with the constant which you want to add it with, then you can just do this, multiply the top and the bottom by two, and this will be a result. And you just have to add these two. And if you want to transform this one as well, then you just have, it, this one will be much complicated because you have 36 over two, but this thing over here, you just, you just have to use the calculator, right? So let's rather use the calculator for this imaginary part. And if you do that, if you say 18 subtract the imaginary part, which you see, which is five square root of three divided by two, then you will have 13, if you want to leave it at about four decimal places, then you have 13.6699. And these two you can add, this will result in that. And you shouldn't forget that everything is still inside the conjugate operation. So we still have to find the conjugate of everything. And now the definition of a conjugate, if you have your complex number in this form, if you find the conjugate of this, then you just negate your imaginary part. So if you have this and you want to find the conjugate of it, then you go back to this because we would have negated this, which is already negative. But if you have a positive, it will become a negative. If you have a negative, it will become positive. So the only thing that you negate is the imaginary part. So now what we have to do here to finalize our answer is just to say that the final answer is then the conjugate of this, which will be equal to negative 31 divided by two, which is negative 15.5. And we're going to negate this so that we can finally remove the conjugate bracket and that will give us a uh, negative J 13 point. If you want to leave it at two decimal places, that's, that is what you have. And that is the final answer for the question. Moving on to the second part, which is part B. So there are two questions and let's start. Now, if you look at this, it, it is of a similar form to the previous one, just that we have this division here and I advise that you use the calculator for that division. But just to break this down at the top, you'll have 10 plus J five plus once again, we take the amplitude of the magnitude outside. Then we found the, in, the individual components the real part and the imaginary part. Then you divide by what you're given in the question. So it's it's quite easy sometimes to work with the rectangular form and sometimes it's easier to work with your polar form. It just depends on the operation that you're doing. And if you look at the, the table in the textbook, then you'd see which operations are quite easier. When you have divisions, it's much, much easier to work with your polar form because you can just divide the amplitudes, right? So if you have such a case and you have an angle that's called this theta, you can just divide these two and then subtract the angles. But now let's just go ahead and use the rectangular form as given in the question and see where we can get with that. So this as well can be, so let's transform this immediately. And that is what we'll have. And don't forget your plus j5, which is over there. So this is our full problem. And using the table or the diagram, which is above, we can't really find the cosine of 40. So you just have to use the calculator for this section. And if you use the calculator, if you'd have your 10 plus j5 still intact, then after multiplying everything which with your result for cosine 40 and sine 40, then you expect to get something like this if you leave it to four decimal places. Right, so that is 9284. Then you're going to divide all that by this. 
And as I said, I do advise that you use a calculator for this, just to avoid any mistakes. So we're only dealing with this section for now. And I'll add in the other section as we go along. This is the result that you expect to get. So you're going to add the 10 with the two point this, and you're going to add this with that over there. And if you do that, this will be a result. Once again, leaving this to about four decimal places so that we don't lose much information. So this is what we have, and we're going to add everything else that we had on this side. And this is quite easy to work with because cosine of 30 is defined in this diagram. So cosine of 30 will be a square root of 3 over 2, and cosine and sine of 30 will be a half. So you can now do this. And add that j5, don't forget it. And here you just have 5 square root of 3 because that will cancel with that and you have that. And on the other side, you have plus j5 and this j5, which is on the outside. So already we have this, which is j10, so you can write it down. And we have this real part, which is that. And we now have to put down the result of this whole section. And as I said, I do advise that you use your calculator for that. And if you use the calculator for that portion, then expect to get something like this, negative 0 0.3672 minus J2.799. And this will be your final expression, which you now have to solve. And once again, I advise that you use the calculator because you have to add the real part, this and that, and the imaginary sections. So if you do all of that, so adding this to that should give you h comma 293 and adding this to that or basically subtracting this from that, then expect to get plus j7.21. So if you want to change this to any other decimal point format, you can Maybe leave it at two decimals and it should look like this. And that'll be your answer. So that is how you go about the same question which I did previously, but now breaking each of the portions down just in case you are ever not allowed to use a calculator or just to know how to do this kind of stuff. And before I end the video, I just want to say that sometimes you might find that you want to find the the square root of a complex number, right? So if you want to find the square root of a, of a complex number, what you can do is you, you always take your, your magnitude, right? So when you take the magnitude of that complex number that you have, and you find the square root of that, so let me show you, let's, let's, let's take an example of nine, with an angle of 30 degrees. What if you want to find the square root of this? So if you have a calculator and you try this, it'll probably give you an error. So the question now is, how do you do this manually? And this is just one out of the many operations that I can think of, but I just remember that I used to kind of not understand how to do this. So I, just, I just thought I should share with you guys. So now, when you want to find this, you find the square root of the magnitude, then you divide the angle by two. So this is just how it works, right? And if you do that, you should get three with an angle of 15 degrees. And if you square this, it should give you the original. You can try this out and you can check this with any other value that you, you might want to work with. And that is how you find the square root of complex numbers if they are in this form. So that is it in this video. I hope you got something, you learned something of value. And I will see you in the next video, whenever that will be. And until then, please like the video, please subscribe, uh, share with your friends, and I'll see you next time.